Whispers. How do we know the new host had a healthy ego? He had printed every single email he ever wrote. Presuming, I think, that someone would go through them at some point. So my fingers were destroyed one summer by going through these. But one of the things that I found that was very interesting to me was an email from a man named Charles Douthat, who wrote to Father Newhouse to say, thank you so much. I have this son, Ross, who's now in college at Harvard, and it's this crazy liberal place. And your magazine is so uh, valuable and informative. It actually, my God actually helped move towards some sort of family conversion, if I'm not mistaken. But it gave Ross Doubt that, in some ways, a version of what I was describing with my own experience in graduate school, reading globalization theory. It gave him a context and a set of terms to demonstrate, you know what? You can believe in God, and you can read The New Yorker. And you, can, and you can write for the New York Times. All these things can have a synthesis. That, and so what do we have now? We have Ross Doubt that on the, uh, you know, a great columnist for the Times able to do this. But where does his institutional authority come from? To your first question about people today, his institutional authority comes from the New York Times. It doesn't come from any religious confession, right? In other words, we would be hard pressed, I think, to find a religious leader whose institutional authority is religious commanding a national voice the way someone like Richard John Newhouse or Bill Coffin or Abraham Heschel or the Reverend Martin Luther King, as Newhouse always reminded us, he's a Baptist preacher, right? Um, a Baptist minister. There's no one, I think, today who can do that. Rick Warren can get, can get on TV and do wonderful things and kind of really organize those who are interested in the Rick Warren approach to you know, evangelical Christianity, but he's not speaking to anybody beyond that, beyond that confession, I think. 